Hey, how you doing? My name is Philip Eugene Baker. People call me Philly for short. If you hadn't guessed by the accent, I'm a Philly guy, born and bred. Are you talking to yourself? What's the matter with you? <laughs> Philly, it could be a I salty place. Freaking business. And you know what but that's just because we're a passionate bunch. I mean, for the most part, our kind is usually made of sports-loving, foodie, and mummer strutting underdogs that are used to putting in hard work. Go birds. The spirit and the will of fictional movie characters pumps through our veins, and we can't explain why. And we're proud of anyone who makes it from these parts. Which reminds me of a story about two Philly guys who are responsible for making this town as salty as it is. Ah, you know what? I'll just let them tell the story themselves. <laughs> Yeah, the way I got into the pretzel business was uh, my neighbor owned Kensington Soft Pretzel Bakery. One day, basically, he got stuck with a bunch of pretzels. He said, uh, I was going to throw them in the trash, but if you sell them, we'll just split whatever you make from it. I said, I'm in. And for some reason, my mom said it would be okay to stay on Roosevelt Boulevard, a 12-lane highway out in Northeast Philadelphia. Sold the pretzels all day. Back then, it was five for a dollar. And that was sort of how it began. Dan and I became college roommates, actually fraternity brothers, back in the 90s, early 90s. You know, he graduated with a business degree, became a stockbroker. I graduated and uh, became a psychiatric counselor for at-risk kids. It happened that he wasn't too happy with, you know, going to nine to five job with the stockbroker. And um, Dan came up with ideas like, hey, let's uh, let's open up a business together. And he brought up the pretzel business. You know, we can make pretzels. We can go in at four or five in the morning. And I like to go off. You could be on the course by noon. The reason there was only 10 pretzel bakeries in Philadelphia, there was only 10 pretzel machines that existed. But the one benefit of being a stockbroker all day, I had free long distance. So I'd spend all day calling around trying to find a pretzel machine. And fortunately, after about nine months a year, I found a pretzel machine down in Florida. We got a flight to Tampa Bay, rented a U-Haul truck, drove about an hour to this gentleman's house who lived in a retirement community. Next thing you know, he takes us to his garage. He opens it up and unveils this pretzel machine. I've never seen one worse than what I saw when he took the tarp off of here. Yeah, it was, it was horrible. I was like, all right, I, I really wasn't on board of buying this with our life savings. So we made this decision to, to leave. You know, our dreams are basically over here because we don't have plane tickets going. We were planning on bringing this machine back. It was the one moment, the one moment that started Philly Pretzel Factory is when I looked at him and I said, do you think we can get the price down from 20? Can we get it for less? And Dan, Dan goes, let's turn around, let's see if we, can, if we can knock down the price. And the rest is history. We agreed to buy it for 14,500. We were gonna do what all the other Philly guys did and just open up four in the morning, close at nine. I mean, that was the original plan. But when we chose this location on Frankfurt Avenue, we didn't even have a cash register. We had aprons when we first opened up. But that first day when we opened, there was a line at the door at nine o'clock and the line never went away until five o'clock in the afternoon. And at that point, I told Len, sell, sell the golf clubs. We, yeah. He wasn't going to be golfing anymore. I didn't and... golf that year, but to be honest, <laughs> the reason we had customers is because, you know, I was baking or Dan was twisting and we were doing the counters. There was really just two of us. We were so far behind in, in the product that every customer that was coming in receiving, we were receiving hot, fresh pretzels. So the word spread that you were getting fresh pretzels all day, and it was because we, we were just so far behind and we weren't prepared for the, you know, the, the walk in traffic, and it was a blessing. <laughs> Who would have ever thought two boys from the neighborhood would grow up to be a bunch of pretzel people? I mean, these guys got more grit than a sheet of sandpaper. Ah, that's on. To really understand what I'm talking about, let me introduce another big shot friend of mine, Mr. Marty Farrell. <laughs> so, uh, I started with Philly Pretzel Factory in 2007, so I'm celebrating 16 years with the company. When I first started, it was a little bit of a humbling beginning. We didn't have all the things we have now, uh, that's for sure. I think there's a lot of pride, not just for myself, but for all the employees that work here at Philly Pretzel Factory in what the company has become over the last 25 years. Franchisees are the heartblood of Philly Pretzel Factory. There's no doubt about it. Most franchisees, when they open a small business, are you know putting a lot on the line. They're risking a lot, and we understand that. You know, here at the corporate office, I want to thank all of the franchisees, especially now celebrating our 25th year anniversary. Uh, all the franchisees that put in all the hard work every day, waking up early in the morning, making the pretzels, working with your employees, serving the customers, and doing it with a smile every single day. Uh, again, we couldn't do it without all of our franchisees. Mm-hmm. 25 years of Philly Pretzel Factory. The crowned king of Philly soft pretzels. Man, am I honored to be a part of it. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention. My boys gave me a pretty important job with the company, and they let me use my real name. 